Hello students, today we're going to be looking at changes in state and energy as it relates to the changes in state from one state of matter to another. So one of the key words and terms today will be kinetic theory of matter. Kinetic means motion and so we're looking at the motion of matter. Couple key things with this, all matter is made up of atoms and molecules. All of these atoms and molecules act like tiny particles. These tiny particles are in motion. If we have increased temperature, we have faster particles. And if we have heavier particles, we have slower particles. Now this does relate to the same temperature. So if we have two sets of atoms, one being heavier, one being lighter, and they're at the same temperature, then we will notice the heavier ones are slower. When we look at this kinetic energy, um, we can call it thermal energy. And thermal energy is our total kinetic energy of particles. And basically it's just an average of the motion of the particles. And that is going to relate to the temperature of that particular piece of matter, whatever it is. Um, generally, matter will expand when it gets hot and it will contract when it gets cool. There is an exception with water. There's a period of time in water when it freezes that it actually expands. Um, and so it is kind of an exception in this. When we are getting the temperature of an object and we take a thermometer and actually get the temperature of a liquid or a solid, that temperature is actually the average kinetic energy of all of those particles. So those particles are in motion, we're getting the average of those particles in motion. Objects with more motion in their particles have a higher temperature. And if you think about how a thermometer works, you have the liquid that's inside the thermometer tube. And that liquid inside the thermometer tube is made up of particles. When that liquid heats up, those particles move faster. And they then take up more space inside of that tiny tube. And then that temperature gauge looks like it is a higher temperature. Those particles have increased their motion. They have um, risen up the tube. And so we can read a higher temperature. If those particles get cooled or slow down, they will take up less space. And they will read a um, lower temperature inside of that temperature gauge. Um, you may notice sometimes that we have expansion joints on roads or in buildings. We actually have one in the um, new section of the high school. So if you were to walk down to the new section of the high school, you'll see these um, metal plates like this that run along the floor and the wall. And those are expansion joints. Those are put in so that the building and those particles can expand and contract based on the temperature outside. Going through changes of state quickly here, um, evaporation is a liquid to a gas, condensation is a gas to a liquid. One of the key terms you've probably not had before is heat of vaporization, and that is the energy that's needed to take a material from a liquid to a gas. So the amount of heat that has to be added to that particular liquid to get it to go to a gas state. Freezing is a liquid to a solid. Melting is a solid to a liquid. And then another key term here, heat of fusion. That's the amount of energy that you need to go from a solid to a liquid. Those two terms, heat of vaporization and heat of fusion, you definitely need to learn. Uh, you will see them again. And then sublimation is a solid to a gas. An example would be dry ice. And deposition is a gas to a solid. Sometimes we look at that maybe um, polluted particles, um, so it's pollution that's in the air. And then when you breathe it in, it can become a particle on your lung, um, can go to a solid in your lung because it is in a cooler surface than in the air. And you can use this little chart here to help you kind of remember that. Uh, when we look at state changes, we're going to do a lab where we're going to take time to take a solid ice. And we're going to melt the ice. Um, be able to see the state of melting where there's going to be ice and liquid. And then this is when we have all liquid. And then we'll see it go from a liquid to a gas. Now one of the key things here is people often um, don't think about this plateau. This is when we have solid. So we've got ice here at this point. It's increasing in temperature. And this would be like our heat of fusion. This is temperature being added or heat being added. At this point, we have solid that's melting. And so our melting point of liquids, if we were looking at um, water, we would have 
can't get, find my mouse now, zero degrees Celsius. And then we can see our liquid warming, and that is in the green there. And then eventually we will hit our boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And at that point, we can see that the, it's changing to a gas. So we have some liquid and some gas at that plateau. All right, transfer of heat energy. We have three main ways that heat energy can be transferred. Key part here, heat energy will always move from warmer objects to colder objects. So if you take your hand and put it on a surface, you'll be transferring some of that heat energy to the colder surface, like a desk or a table. Um, and sometimes on the lab tables in the science room, you'll notice that it actually leaves an imprint kind of of your hand um, because we have those black shiny tables. So you can try that and see. Um, so it's caused by the kinetic theory of matter. If you have a warmer object, the particles are in have more motion to them. They're a little more excited state, and they have more energy, so they transfer to that colder object. So three ways this can happen, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is when you transfer heat energy by touch. So touching a desk will transfer heat energy from your hand to the desk. Convection is by motion of particles. Warmer particles rise and push cooler particles down. And so you can see this in boiling water. You'll be able to see this in lab as well. The particles will actually heat near that heat surface. They'll rise, and then they push down cooler particles. Eventually, those become the cooler particles, and they fall again to get heated. And it produces this boiling eventually. And then radiation is a transfer of heat through light. So the actual light itself transfers heat energy. That is our explanation of states of matter and energy changes.